guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be starting some annual geraniums from seed. I have several different varieties. Now these are the type that are known as like zonal geraniums. They are used in containers, window boxes, oftentimes grown as an annual, especially in colder climates. You can bring them in as a house plant. In fact, you can see these behind me. They're doing really well in here. Uh, there are hardy geraniums and those are the true geraniums. So the ones we're starting today are actually pelargoniums is what they're referred to as. But I guess somewhere along the line, they were lumped into the hardy geranium family because they had some similar characteristics and then they've just kind of been known as that since that day. So there's always a little bit of confusion. So what we're growing today are annual zonal geraniums, also known as pelargoniums. The ones that oftentimes look like this. Now I need to do a little bit of deadheading, but I left those on so I can show you how I do that. But these were grown in the chicken window box this year. I had three, this one, this one, and that one. So those were planted in the window box right toward the end of May and they were just a four inch size geranium. They did so well. They put on a lot of growth. Uh, and then I dug them out this fall, roots and all, potted them in terracotta containers, brought them straight in here and they've done really, really well. They've been in bloom nonstop. There has never been a point where they have not had any color on them this season. That's why I decided to start all of our geranium seeds in here. They're gonna get plenty of light. We won't have to have any grow lights set up. And because these are doing so well, I think we'll have really good luck with our seedlings and growing them on in here as well. I would rank geraniums probably in the top five easiest seeds that I've ever grown. Really easy project, but it does take them quite a lot of time. So between 12 to 16 weeks to get from seed to bloom stage. And that length of time usually means you're going to have to bump them up from their seed cells, like the ones you start them in, into larger containers somewhere along the way. Usually mine end up in four inch size containers before they end out in the landscape. I am starting here a little bit earlier maybe than usual. So it's possible I might be bumping from seed tray to four inch to maybe something a little bit larger, which I wouldn't mind uh, because I would love to have some nice big geraniums to put out in the garden. Now there are, I wanna say several hundred varieties of annual geranium that you can grow. I've got, I think seven or eight different varieties here. All of them are from the Maverick series, except for one, which is from Bullseye, the Bullseye series. So Maverick series, the reason I love these so much is that you get the nice big flower globes. They're just huge and impressive. They're also really tolerant of heat and they're tolerant of high humidity. So for those of you in the South, uh, any geranium from the Maverick series would be a really good one. And then the other one, so the Bullseye Salmon, this one, I only got one variety of this one because it's got darker leaves. So you've got kind of like chocolate maroon colored leaves with a green edge rather than kind of the other way around. And they're supposed to maintain that depth of color even in the high heat because a lot of other darker leaf varieties will kind of uh, wash out in high heat uh, areas. But this one's not supposed to do that. So I thought we would just try this. These packets, all of them just have 10 seeds each. And all of these came from Swallowtail Garden. I just ordered these recently. They have a really good selection of geranium seeds so anyway we have one of the bullseye salmon and maybe we can pop some pictures up on the screen and then I did get four packets so 40 seeds of the maverick coral now I'm also excited to see the difference in color here because coral usually has a little bit more of a tropical like orange vibe to it sometimes it's a little bit more like uh, vibrant while salmon has that little really soft kind of soft coral soft salmon uh, hue which I, that's what I prefer but I wanted to see how these turned out you can google images and you get kind of the spectrum of color there uh, we've got maverick scarlet which is a gorgeous red and I wanted to have I really just want to have a lot of uh, geraniums to then bring back in here because I've enjoyed these so much this winter you see them from whatever angle you're looking at the Hartley you can see this bright pink shining through I'd love to have just a collection of all the colors in here we've got maverick quicksilver which is kind of a silvery purple, maverick pink, so more of a kind of true pink, maverick apple blossom, anything labeled apple blossom I love. Apple blossom snapdragons, um, and these kind of have the same kind of coloring. It's more of like a creamy white into a very soft blush pink. We've got maverick violet, which is a very vibrant purplish pink, and then we have Maverick White. I don't think I mentioned, but the Bullseye series does stay a tiny bit shorter, but just within like an inch or two. So size difference, I don't think it's gonna be hugely noticeable. I think it's gonna be leaf color that we'll notice. The other cool thing about them, even if you're growing in a more Northern or a colder climate like I do, I mean, I don't know if you can see outside, we got new snow last night. Um, you can dig them out of your containers or out of the ground, pot them up and bring them in as a house plant. And they do great so long as they get enough sun. Or you can take cuttings, they're super easy. You just snip off 
a branch, uh, dip it in some rooting hormone, and then pot it right up in soil, and they root so, so fast. So if you don't want to commit to digging out the whole plant, you can always root some pieces um, and do it that way. This way, because they were so contained in that window box, it was easy to grab the roots. And then to deadhead, it's super easy. See this spent bloom right here? You just follow that stem back down to where it meets the main branch, and they just pop right off. Maybe make a little bit of a petal mess, but not bad. This one's starting to go right here. So we're gonna pop this one off. It's a really satisfying cleanup project, honestly. I'm gonna reach in and grab a couple from back here. I think maybe one more. Oh no, two more. You can tell I haven't done this in a minute. Oh, back to looking super fresh. Look at that. These have only been fertilized twice since I brought them in too with this. Oh my, didn't get the cap on very tightly. Hopefully that didn't leak in the basket. Isn't that awesome? You don't even have to use pruners. Oh, I just love this color so much. Looks awesome. Deadheading is something you do want to do with geraniums. Just make it a weekly habit just to walk by the pots and pop off the spent blooms because then the plant will send a lot more energy into new blooms and new growth rather than trying to set seeds. So that's a fairly important one to keep these uh, productive. And in terms of watering, they're actually fairly drought tolerant once they're established in a container. Uh, you know, if they're in a large enough container and if they're protected from wind, oftentimes they're not one that you have to water every single day. In the chicken coop, they had to have water every day because the reservoir was pretty darn shallow. And you know, those plants, I had them in there with super bells and all of them were rooted in there together. So they needed that extra water. But when I have them in a more protected spot, they don't need quite as much. They're much more forgiving that way which is great. And here in the Hartley, they probably get water, I wanna say once a week, uh, more often when it was warmer out for sure. The process is pretty basic. We've got our seed starting mix here, which we will pre-moisten like normal. We've got our self-watering. These are the Grow Ease seed starter kits. I'm not gonna be putting in water or the platform to raise these up until they've germinated because I'm gonna be setting these right down on uh, heat. They do benefit from temperatures between 70 and 75 to germinate. And the temperature in here isn't 100% consistent. It gets quite a bit cooler than that in here at night. So having that heat underneath will really help them out. If I was to be growing them in the studio or inside where the temperatures are consistent, like 70, 71 degrees, I wouldn't need to worry about it as much. I mean, it'd still speed up the process, but it wouldn't be as necessary as I think it's gonna be out here. Um, now you'll notice at the end of today's project, I won't have heat mats under everything because I need to go find all the rest of my heat mats. Uh, they're somewhere, somewhere in our house or barn. We also have the humidity domes here, which is very helpful for the germination process. Uh, we've got our mister to settle all the seeds and soil in. And then whatever little cells I have left, because I've got 110 seeds right here. Whatever cells we have left, I'm gonna pop some artichokes in because I'd like to have a few more of those growing. Now I hope my confidence doesn't get me here, but I'm only gonna put one seed per cell. Um, you can do two if you want to. That's what I normally do is two per cell and then I separate them later. But I usually have really good luck with geranium seeds. So I'm just gonna do one per cell see how it goes. I would like to not have to separate them and move them around until I need to bump them out of these trays into larger containers. And if I did two per cell and they both came up, then I would need to do an extra step in between that that I don't wanna do. Okay, before we get too far into it, I'll show you what these seeds look like. I don't know if you can even, can you see them through there? So we've got the envelope and then we've got a little plastic bag and then we have another little plastic envelope. See those? Exactly 10 seeds right there. And we barely cover these seeds, like an eighth of an inch, just barely cover them. Okay, I'm gonna start getting the soil ready here and then when we get ready to plant the first tray, I'll do that one fairly slow so you can kind of see the process and then we'll speed up the rest of them, uh, making sure to label along the way. Got my labels right here.
Okay, so we've got our empty seed tray here and then our seed starting mix, which we have lightly moistened and you just want it to be the consistency like it'll hold together like that, but it's not dripping a bunch of water when you squeeze it. So we're gonna fill up our seed tray with that. We're gonna lightly tamp the soil down. We don't want it to be tamped down really hard, but we would just wanna settle any air pockets that may, have been, may be in there. And then we'll add any extra. And we'll do that again. That looks perfect right there. And now I'm gonna just take my finger and make a slight indent where I'm gonna put each seed. Okay, we're gonna do the Maverick Whites first. So I'm gonna label. Now I only have 10 seeds, so I'm gonna do these four and these two right here, and then I'll start my next seed here. There they are. There was actually 11 seeds, sweet. So I've got four, eight, nine, 10, 11. Before I cover over the seed, if I'm sharing trays with something else, which it can be a little bit risky to do, um, I like to start my next label so that I make sure to not cover over anything or, you know, just to keep it all straight. So I'm gonna take a little bit of extra soil. We're gonna just barely cover each one of these seeds. There we go. Usually I wait till the whole tray is done, but what we do afterward is we just use our mister, spray bottle, whatever you've got that just sprays really nice and lightly, and we water the whole cell in. That just settles everything in, gives it a really nice start. So when the whole tray is done and misted, I put the humidity dome on and then we put them on seedling heat mats, and that's pretty much the process. So I'm gonna get through the rest of these varieties, uh, and then we'll get them organized on this table. I might need to move some things around a bit. <laughs> with 121 geranium seeds. So there was one extra seed in every single packet. I had 11 packets total of geranium, so that worked out beautifully. And then 23 green globe artichokes. I thought for some reason that I was gonna end up with just like a few random cells at the end of my last tray, but I ended up just starting a whole extra tray um, to accommodate the one last geranium seed that I had. And it worked out perfect because I had 23 artichoke seeds left, which finished out the rest of the tray. So like in this one here, I had just one geranium seed left, which I could have just doubled up in one of those. Uh, but I thought, you know what, I may as well, I have extra soil, I'll just plant the rest of my artichoke seeds, which is the whole rest of this, and plant that one geranium. This whole tray is filled with maverick coral. This one has maverick coral and the bullseye salmon. This one has maverick apple blossom, maverick pink, maverick quick quicksilver. This one has quicksilver, scarlet, and coral. And this one has white, violet, and apple blossom. So I kind of just fit them in trays however it worked out. These are things that I need to take back to the greenhouse. So I brought two bags of the seed starter mix, and these are the 16 quart bags. It only took one bag to fill all five trays, plus I have a little bit left right there. 
So the second bag I did not have to open, which was awesome. I felt like that stretched pretty far. I am gonna need to pick up an extra mister because I'm using that in the studio and in the greenhouse. It'd actually be handy to have two extra misters. That one's just so nice because it's a 360. You can turn it whatever direction you want and it still miss out beautifully. Uh, anyway, I have other misters. I'll probably just go grab what I've got in there. I've got some spray bottles too. And Benjamin joined me for a little while this afternoon and he had some hot chocolate. Let me give you a little bit of a tour while we're out here, may as well, because these amaryllis have been so gorgeous. Look at how huge these blooms are. And we've got another bloom stalk here. There's another bloom stalk right here. The ivy has been wonderful. Just loving that. We already kind of looked over here. We've got an ivy, a fern, and a geranium. Over here we have a fig. And is that a philodendron split leaf? I don't know. They're all cuttings um, that I popped in this pot and they have rooted and they're throwing out new leaves beautifully. So we'll see what happens there. We've got a cordelin and a uh, pegasus begonia. And this side's really pretty. It's full of a lot of fun things. I'm gonna figure out some kind of uh, something else to put right in here to put more plants on because you know we had this circular table in the center, but it tucks in beautifully right there. I love it right there. And no, I have not painted the stuff under the sink yet. Just try to ignore it. Everything on this stand is looking really good. Look at the streptocarpus. Also from Little Prince, isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. Yeah, everything's looking pretty darn good in here right now. The Tretascantia, gorgeous, starting to bloom. There's our Myrtle, looking great so far. And then this is the Amaryllis that Gardner's Supply sent out. Isn't that phenomenal? Oh my goodness. Does it have a tag? I don't see what variety it is, but I love it. And then I've got Dill right here, and then a few other things. Scheffler, that's an Alpine Junior. I do have the uh, Staghorn Fern, I still haven't repotted need to do that. I've got a mint. Just cut that back because it was getting kind of straggly. There's a thyme plant and then of course the geraniums here and the grape ivy and a fern right down here. I have not been utilizing the floor heaters. You know I had this one right here, this radiant heater right here in the center and then I had this little black one over here. It has been pretty mild which has been very nice. I mean we've got snow on the ground but it hasn't been like single digits or even close to zero but we are heading back into that so I'm going to be mindful of the temperatures. In fact I should check tonight's temperature uh, because I will run those heaters. They take the edge off. Tonight's low is 22 so we're getting pretty close. Yeah I think well our lowest I did see this morning it said nine degrees in the next 10 days but it looks like it's now 12 degrees so I'll take it. And then you might have noticed I did plug in the one seedling heat mat. I've got one great big one that would actually fit all of these on it, I think. Uh, at least these five. Uh, so I just need to find it and we'll get that all set up. And I like the ones that I have a little bit better than this one because they have a thermostat that you can set. You can set the temperature exactly where you want it. So if you have a very specific type of uh, heat that you need to reach or maintain for a seed to germinate, you can do that with those heat mats. And I'll show them to you later on when I find them. And you guys, that is it for today's project. I mean, what an absolute pleasure it was to be out here this afternoon. I don't even think I can express what it feels like to be out here, what it feels like to be out here starting seeds and just doing projects like that in this beautiful greenhouse. It just, it still doesn't feel quite real and I don't think it ever really will. I'm just so thankful for it and it's just been such a huge, huge blessing. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have never started geranium seeds before, I would encourage you to do it, especially those of you who are beginners. This is a great one for beginners because they are so, so easy to grow. And don't let the, you know, the fact that they, you know, I put bottom heat under there scare you. If you're starting them inside, you'll be just fine. Uh, you know, and it's definitely worth a shot because especially with some of those annuals that can be more expensive and they can add up if you want to make a big impact with them, it really is worth it. I mean, 121 geraniums, if you were to spend $10 per geranium, you know, roughly, depending on what size you're buying, that's a huge savings if you can do it from seed. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye. P.S. We found our seedling heat mats. Hooray! We're back in business. So I just wanted to show you what size I'm using on this table. I'm using one of the 48 by 20 inch ones, which is the larger one down there. And it's just so nice. It fits so much. So the heat mat itself plugs right into this thermostat, which right now you can see the soil temps at 76.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So a little high. I did set it lower, so it will go down 
from there. And then the thermostat runs and plugs into the wall. This little wire runs up into our soil. So it will kick the seedling heat mat off if it gets too hot, which will be so nice because when the sun comes out during the day, it does warm up dramatically in here. And that soil temperature, if I've got the heat mat going and the sun coming in, I mean, it's unnecessary to run the heat mat when that's happening and the soil will warm up just naturally. So it's kind of nice. It'll go on and off as needed. Anyway, that's what the plan is for now. We'll leave them on the heat mat until we see germination. As soon as they germinate, the humidity domes come off, the heat mat is shut off, and then we'll just let them grow on in here just with the natural whatever it is in here. I'm excited about these plants.